Hi everyone and welcome to the session on Deep Learning with Unstructured Text. My name is Akhil Negi and I am a data scientist at ASRI's New Delhi R&D Center. Today for this session, I have been joined by my colleague Anurag Sharma, who is a data scientist at the R&D Center. Uh, we both work towards developing natural language processing capabilities in the ArcGIS Python API. Now let's look at the overview of the session today. First, we will be talking about unstructured text and its use in GIS. Then we will talk a little about what is natural language processing and what all models we have available for handling natural language in ArcGIS ADF or Python. Then we will take a deeper dive into the model architecture, how these models work, what architecture these are based on. After that, we will take a look at two different categories of models in ArcGIS Learn. First one being trainable and the other ones uh, inference only. And then we will summarize the session. Uh, let's talk about uh, what is unstructured text and how can it be utilized in GIS. Unstructured text is any written content uh, that is in free-flowing language and lacks a structure or in other terms cannot be indexed or mapped onto standard database fields or tables. Such unstructured text can be found in books, journals, news articles, social media posts and is also found on all over the internet in form of text written in the web pages. And traditionally, it was believed that uh, geospatial data is usually available in form of maps, features and imagery layers, but there is a lot of uh, location and important information tapped in uh, unstructured text as well. For example, uh, there could be location and other significant information tapped in uh, 911 uh, call transcript. There could be a lot of information that we can extract from a support executive talking to a customer and we can use such information to map these and drive insights, geospatial insights from uh, such systems. Coming on to natural language processing, uh, it is a field of computer science that deals with natural language text. Uh, it allows us to extract insights and information from these documents, categorizing such documents and so on. A few years back, it was a very difficult task for computers to understand natural language. But with the current state of uh, natural language processing models and AI, uh, now the computer is able to perform a lot of uh, NLP tasks few uh, such common tasks are uh, text classification uh, which means classifying text into different categories for example it could be classifying emails into spam versus ham uh, there is named entity recognition where we can extract uh, recognizable and named entities from uh, a text document these could be name of persons, political figures, addresses, and so on. Then there is machine translation, where a computer can translate some text from source language to target language. We have text summarization, uh, where a computer can generate a meaningful and concise summary from a longer piece of text. We have question answering systems where we can pass a longer text document to a system and ask questions from that text and it should be able to answer it from depending on what is written in the text document there is text generation where we can pass a snippet of text to the system and it should be able to predict uh, what can be written next that is meaningful now let's take a look at the different kinds of text models available within ArcGIS, APF, or Python. Uh, these text models can be categorized like trainable 
and inference only models so first talking about the trainable models these models require training on a given data set before they can be used for inferencing like let's say we are trying to build a text classifier that is able to classify news articles in different categories being sports news or political news and so on so we can train a text classifier by showing it documents that have already been classified into these categories uh, such models uh, can look at the training data and uh, try to learn how to classify new text documents into the uh, trained categories and similarly there are other trainable models as well which will need training before they can uh, make inference to a new unseen text document the other kind is inference only models which are pre-trained and can predict without any sort of training so there is uh, one such model is a zero shot classifier which Anurag will be talking about later and it is able to uh, take a text and a set of categories uh, which it has not been trained on and it will still classify the in input text into uh, the given categories uh, and there are a uh, few such models that uh, can make inferences without training in ArcGIS Learn which we will be discussing later in the session before we dig deeper into these models and uh, take a look at the demos uh, let's talk about what is the core uh, engine that's running behind these models and how is that running uh, or in other words uh, let's talk about the model architecture majority of the text models in ArcGIS.Learn are based on an open source library called Hugging Face Transformers Library uh, the Hugging Face Transformers library aims at providing state-of-the-art NLP models for uh, further training or for ready-to-use purposes. The library provides a lot of general-purpose transformer architectures like BERT, XLNet, T5, GPT, etc. Uh, these architectures give state-of-the-art results on almost all the NLP tasks that we discussed in the previous slides. Uh, talking about the transformers, uh, this architecture came out in uh, 2017 and was proposed by Ashish Vaswani and his team. And uh, since then, it has been outperforming the previous state-of-the-art architectures like LSTMs and GRUs. And uh, now in 2021, it is the architecture of choice for all the NLP tasks. Now, let's take a look at the transformers architecture in a little detail and try to understand and build an intuition of uh, what are the different parts of the architecture and uh, what does each part do and how does the architecture work so on the image here you see the uh, transformers architecture that was proposed in the original paper attention is all you need the transformer architecture is comprised of two main blocks. Uh, the first one is encoder and the second was, one is decoder. Then there are uh, different layers in this encoder and uh, decoder module. The uh, layers being self tension layer, feed forward layer and additionally in the decoder we have an encoder decoder tension layer as well. Uh, in the following slides, we will try to build an intuition of uh, what all these uh, layers learn and how does the architecture work. Uh, let's try to understand the architecture by looking at the task of uh, machine translation. So here I'm trying to uh, translate a, a sentence in English, that is my name is Akhil, to its uh, corresponding sentence in Hindi or it could be any other target language. So as I said, that transformer is made of two different parts. The first one is encoder. That is uh, the part in the left box. And then there is a decoder. So what happens here is we pass the input sentence to the encoder and the uh, input goes through all these layers and then finally gets 
converted into a encoding of uh, n dimension so it's uh, an n dimension vector so now we have uh, different uh, information extracted from the input sentence stored in that uh, vector that is output by the encoder then this vector goes into the decoder and then it goes through the decoder layer and then finally it tries to output the uh, text in a different language in case of machine translation uh, which uh, corresponds to the input text so let's try to uh, zoom into the encoder and see how it works so here you see the encoder module and uh, first thing that that goes into the encoder is the input so here the input is my name is akhil uh, since uh, computer doesn't understand text it only understand numbers so we have to map these uh, input text uh, words into corresponding numbers so the first layer is input embedding and what it does is it uh, translates each uh, word into a n dimension word vector here uh, we have a four dimension vector so my is converted into a four dimension word name is converted is is converted and akhil is also converted into a four dimension word and now once uh, we have uh, converted text into numbers now we can input it into the uh, architecture or into the model so the next module we have is positional encoding module in uh, transformers we feed the complete sentence at once to the uh, model so it needs a way to understand which word comes at which position uh, in the sentence so it needs to maintain that relative position of the word in the sentence so this layer adds that positional information to the word vector that we saw in the previous uh, step now after we have encoded the position into the input then we uh, pass that positionally encoded input to the attention head so what is the purpose of the attention uh, layer and what it learns is uh, specifically this attention layer is called self attention layer and let's try to understand what it does what it learns on the left image you see a sentence that says the animal didn't cross the street because it was too tired so the uh, the self attention layer tries to understand the significance of each word with the corresponding to all other words in the sentence so here uh, out of the two uh, two examples in the left one if we read the sentence it corresponds to the animal so the attention layer will try to learn this mapping that it has a very high significance uh, or high weightage to the word animal in the sentence whereas on the right if you see the sentence is the animal didn't cross the street because it was too wide so the model will or this particular layer will learn that here it corresponds uh, to the word street more than the word animal so this self attention tries to learn this mapping in the uh, input sentence and this is a very important uh, layer in the transformers architecture and adds a, a huge amount of value to the uh, performance of the transformer architecture then we also have these residual connections uh, what that does is it adds the uh, input vectors back to the output of the attention layer and uh, this helps in two ways it helps uh, maintain the positional information that was added by the positional encoding layer across uh, the various layers and it also helps in smoother flow of gradients through the network while back propagating so uh, back propagation is how the uh, model actually learns and uh, we won't be discussing back propagation here but yeah uh, these residual connections help with the the process of back propagation then the next layer is a feed forward layer so the outputs uh, from self attention layer are further passed into this feed forward layer and uh, they get transformed 
and adds more information uh, from the input sentence to the uh, output and one other thing to notice here is that uh, this uh, that we just discussed was uh, one block of the encoder and similarly we have multiple stacked blocks that uh, makes the full encoder and in the original paper uh, six such blocks were stacked to uh, form the encoder and uh, identically six such blocks were stacked to form the decoder as well now let's look at the decoder part of the uh, architecture so uh, just like uh, the input text was encoded into uh, word vectors similarly the output Outputs are also then uh, encoded into uh, the target language word vectors and that is done by the output embedding layer. Next we also have the positional encoding layer to add the positional information to the output sentence. Then uh, this mass attention layer is the same one as uh, the uh, self attention layer in the encoder. Now we have one additional layer in the decoder that is encoder decoder attention and uh, this uh, learns something different than the self attention layer what it learns is it learns the significance of a particular output word to the uh, different parts of the input sentence so it's it's a cross attention between the output and the input so yeah this is the additional layer in the decoder uh, that uh, uh, keeps learning the uh, cross attention or in other terms you can say the mapping or significance of the an output word to the input sentence words then again we have a feed forward layer uh, which uh, further transforms these uh, attention encodings then finally we have a linear layer head on top of uh, the output of the decoder and this linear layer transforms the output of the decoder into whatever dimension we want uh, here the dimension for translation will be the uh, number of unique words in the output language dictionary so we will have uh, uh, n scores if there are n words in the dictionary and then the final softmax layer what that will do is uh, it will transform those n scores into probabilities and the output word will be the one with the highest probability so let's say uh, the third uh, position has the highest probability in the softmax output so that will be our uh, target output word that we want uh, to predict and let's say uh, for my we are predicting a wrong output word that will generate a loss or an error uh, and we will use that error and back propagate it through the network to adjust the weights and that's how the neural network learns so this is a very high level overview of how uh, transformers architecture work and should build some intuition into how all these different parts work and produce uh, such good results now let's uh, shift our focus back to the ArcGIS uh, Python API uh, and see what all uh, different types of models or text models do we have in the API. So the two different kinds of models that we have are trainable models and uh, inference only models. And the trainable models that we have in the API are entity recognizer, sequence to sequence and text classifier model. Now we will uh, one by one go through each of the model and uh, go through a demo of uh, the model and show how it works. Uh, first up is entity recognizer. So what is an entity recognizer? Uh, entity recognition is a technique with which we are able to extract named or recognizable entities from an unstructured piece of text. Uh, these entities could be uh, organization, person, date, country, geopolitical entities, etc. Uh, that are present in our unstructured input text. Uh, we can have uh, multiple applications of such a system. We can uh, do street address uh, extraction from 911 calls, from crime reports, 
uh, for prompt action on those we can extract other things like uh, city names state names countries and uh, we can train the model to extract any any such uh, recognizable entity now let's look at how we can uh, use entity recognizer and build a system which can analyze uh, fire reports and then uh, let's see what further analyses we can do with the uh, results of that extraction here i have a jupyter notebook open inside the arcgis pro where we will try to analyze uh, around 10000 fire incident reports from cheshire county in the uk so the first thing that we need to do in order to train any uh, model is to prepare the label data in order to label the entities in the text reports we will be using an open source tool called tocano that helps us with annotation so here uh, we have loaded around 100 fire reports into the uh, tool and created uh, labels uh, such as title, date and time, number of engines, response unit, address, incident type, etc. And then we will go ahead and uh, label each uh, report and label each entity into the corresponding label type. Then after we have labeled the reports, we can extract the uh, label data in form of JSON file from the tool. And then uh, we will start with the, the workflow to train the model. First, we will uh, import the necessary libraries. We will import prepare data function. We will import entity recognizer model class and other supporting libraries. Now, in order to prepare the data, we will call prepare data, pass it the exported JSON file, and we will uh, set the dataset type as any JSON. Then we can also call show batch on the data object to see if the data has been loaded properly. And after we have prepared the data, we'll move on to the training phase. So for training, we will call the entity recognizer class, pass it the data object and the backbone. Uh, for entity recognizer, we have two kinds of backbones. One is uh, spacey and the other one uh, are all based on uh, transformer backend. So here we are selecting spacey backbone, creating the NER model. Then we will call LR find to find an optimum learning rate, which is very important for training. Uh, if we set the learning rate too high, uh, the loss will not converge at all. And if we set the learning rate too low, uh, the model will take forever or very long to converge. Then after we have the learning rate, we can call fit on the model, pass it the number of epochs, meaning we uh, tell the model how many times you have to go, uh, the model has to go through the complete data set and we'll pass the uh, found learning rate from the last step. And here we can see that the losses are uh, converging, are decreasing, and we can see that the F and score is getting better with each epoch. Once we have trained the model, uh, we can also evaluate the model with the help of few helper functions. We can call uh, metrics per label and see precision recall and FN scores on all the entity types. We can also call show results and see uh, the results on the validation data set. Once we have validated and evaluated the model, we can uh, save the model to the disk by calling uh, dot save and giving a model name and later we can uh, use that saved model for prediction now let's use the model and uh, extract entities from the 10,000 reports that we had so we will call extract entities method and pass it the reports folder path and here are the results from the model and now let's uh, post process the results so here uh, we are uh, changing the date time column into the date time type and as we can see that uh, sometimes an incident was attended by multiple response units so we will also explode the uh, data frame to one uh, response unit per incident 
Now, after we have post processed the results, we will go ahead and uh, publish it to a feature layer. For that, we will use ArcGIS uh, GIS module. And first, we will geocode the locations, uh, the addresses that we extracted from the model. And after geocoding the addresses, we will publish the uh, data frame to a feature layer. And here we have the published feature layer. Then uh, we can add this feature layer into Pro. Here uh, we see all the incidents that were extracted, extracted by the uh, model. And I've also added a layer with all the fire stations in the county. Uh, we can change the symbology to see which all uh, which fire station responded to which incident uh, and this piece of information was extracted by the model and after we have uh, added the data to pro we can uh, create a linked chart and do further analysis of the response patterns so here i have created a link chart and the link chart has a uh, fire station and incidents as the entities or nodes and the relationship is set to uh, responded to meaning which fire station responded to which incident and here we have all the, uh, the all the nodes here are either a fire station or a fire incident report uh, the uh, nodes that are in the circular region are the incidents that were attended by just one fire station and the scattered nodes are the ones that were attended by multiple fire stations then we can also uh, do some analysis on the link chart we'll go to link analysis uh, let's do a centrality analysis and try to find out an incident uh, which was attended by uh, most fire stations and see the response pattern so we'll do a centrality analysis for that We'll do a degree centrality and select incoming to see all uh, the number of incoming connections to a node so the top one will be with uh, the most incoming connections and uh, this is the node and this was the node that had uh, the most number of stations responding to it we can also say select connected and it will select all the connected nodes in this case all the fire stations responding to the incident and then we can also uh, go back to the map and see the highlighted incidents highlighted incident and the responding fire stations <coughs> so we see here is the incident uh, that was selected and we also have all the fire stations highlighted that responded to the incidents and we can see the response pattern and we can see that this station as far as in the far west also responded to this particular incident this is just one example of how uh, entity recognition can add value to your unstructured data along with the analytical capabilities that are uh, provided in uh, ArcGIS suite of products now let's take a look at the next model that is sequence to sequence model so sequence to sequence uh, models are capable of translating an input sequence of uh, a particular length to an output sequence of a different length and due to this capability it fits a lot of applications we can use sequence to sequence for machine translation text summarization question answering systems and a lot more now uh, let's take a look at uh, a demo where we will be using sequence sequence model to standardize and correct incorrect addresses here we are in the ArcGIS uh, notebook server and uh, we will aim at correcting and standardizing incorrect addresses using sequence sequence model by address standardization we mean that we will try to convert non-standard address terms into standard USPS uh, address abbreviations and address correction will aim at correcting misspelled place names a word about the data set the data set that we are working with is uh, collected from openaddresses.io and is a subset of US addresses 
and we have uh, synthetically induced uh, spelling errors and uh, non standardization in the address to prepare this data set. Uh, let's start with imports. We will import prepare text data and uh, sequence sequence model. Then let's go to data preparation phase. For data preparation, we will call prepare text data, pass it the uh, path of the CSV file, dataset CSV file. We will select the task as sequence translation and pass the text and label columns. And lastly, we'll pass the uh, training data file. Once the data preparation is done, we can call show batch on the data object to see the uh, data set and if that has been loaded correctly or not. We can see here that uh, street has been standardized to SD, Kansas has been standardized to KS and so on. Let's uh, go on to the model creation. Uh, we have a list of supported backbones to choose from while creating the sequence sequence model. Uh, here we have uh, three available backbones and once we have uh, chosen the supported backbone we can call available backbone models to see what all pre-trained models are available for that backbone. Uh, let's choose T5 base here and we will call sequence sequence class constructor, pass it the data object and the selected pre-trained model. For training the model, we will first call LRFind, find an optimum learning rate. Then we will call fit, pass the optimum learning rate and the number of epochs for which we want to train. By default, when we uh, load the model, it's in frozen state, meaning only the last layer of the model is trainable. We can call unfreeze to squeeze more performance out of the model. Call LRFind again and then call fit again for the unfrozen model. Uh, we will train till the time the loss is converging and the accuracy is improving and once uh, we are satisfied with the achieved accuracy we can stop training once we have trained we can call show results to validate the results and uh, look at the uh, predictions and versus the targets so here we can see north has been correctly standardized to n uh, street has been corrected and then standardized to SD. City has been corrected to city and so on. So we know the model is working well. Next, we can also look at the model metrics by calling get model metrics. And finally, we can save the model and use the train model for prediction. So here we are passing two non standard incorrect addresses and we can call predict and see the model is uh, doing a good job of converting north to n, correcting south and converting it to standard s and we can hence see that the model after training is performing pretty well at the task. This concludes an overview of sequence, sequence model in the Python API and now I would like to hand the session over to Anurag to take you through the rest of the models that are there in the API. Thanks Akhil and hello everyone. I will be talking about rest of the unstructured text models offered by the arcgis.learn.text submodule. The first model we will be talking about is the text classifier model. Text classification is the process of assigning tags, labels to the unstructured text. It can be further divided into two different categories, single label text classification and multi-label text classification. In single label text classification, we would like to assign only a single category to the unstructured text. For example, a tweet sentiment can be either positive or negative. In multi-label text classification, the unstructured text can be categorized into multiple categories. For example, a social media post can either be toxic, severe toxic or it can contain some obscene language or it can be insulting towards someone. The application of the text classifier model can be it can be used to identify country names from incomplete house addresses or tagging inappropriate or toxic contents in one's organization. Talking about the demo for the text classifier model, we will be picking up a scenario where we will be identifying country names from incomplete house addresses. 
In this demo, we will show how the test classifier model can be used to predict the country names from the incomplete house addresses. For this demo purpose, we have picked up a dataset from openaddresses.io and we have created a small subset of data consisting of house addresses in multiple languages like English, Japanese, French, Spanish, etc. Let's get started. We will first import the necessary modules required to train the classifier. Then we will connect to the ArcGIS online account and pass in the ArcGIS item ID to get the training data. So this ArcGIS item consists of a CSV file containing incomplete house addresses on which we want to train our text classifier model. To get the CSV file, we first need to download the file, extract it. So we have extracted the file over here. Now to train the model, we need to prepare the data. To do so, we will call the prepare text data function, pass on the task type as classification and pass the appropriate parameters. When the data object has been created, we will call the data.classes parameter to see what all different classes we have in our data. As we can see, we have incomplete house addresses from the following countries, US, Australia, South Africa, Canada, to name a few. We will then call the show, show batch method on the data object to see what all addresses we have in our data set. As we can see, the house addresses in this data set are written in multiple languages like Japanese, French, Spanish, etc. Let's see how we can use the test classifier model to train a classifier on this type of data. The test classifier model of arcgis.learn.txt submodule is built on top of the Hugging Face Transformer library. The model training and inferencing workflows are similar to the computer vision models in arcgis.learn. To see what backbones are supported for this text classifier model, we will call the supported backbone parameter for this class. We will then call the available backbone models method with the backbone name for which we want to train our classifier. Since this is a case of a multilingual data, we will choose a model or a backbone that can work with multilingual text. So here we will choose the XLM Roboter backbone to train the classifier. We will then instantiate the model object by passing the data object and the appropriate backbone name. Moving towards the model training part, we will first find the optimal learning rate for the classifier by calling the LR find method of the model. It will return an optimal learning rate for which we want to train our model on. Training the model is an iterative process. We can train the model call by calling the fit method till the validation loss continues to go down with each training pass. We can see how the training has been proceeded till four epochs. By default, the earlier layers of the model are frozen. Once the later layers have been sufficiently trained, the earlier layers can be unfrozen to fine tune the entire model. To do so, we will call the unfreeze method of the model and then again call the fit method to train the entire model. We are training this model for six more epochs. And here we can see that the model is able to achieve an accuracy score of about 98.66%. Once the model has been trained, we can see how well the model is performing. To do so, we will call the show result method of the model. As we can see in the results, the model is doing a near perfect job and correctly predicting the country codes of the incomplete house addresses. We can also call the model's predict method and pass in an incomplete house address to get its country code. We will also calculate some matrices to see how well the model is performing. First important matrix to look at is the model accuracy. To calculate the accuracy of the model, we will call the accuracy method and we see that model is around 98.66% accurate. Other important matrices to look at are precision, recall, and F1 measures. These scores are calculated for each of the classes that we have in our dataset. Here are the results for the precision, recall, and F1 scores. We can then call the model save method to save the trained model. 
and load it at later point of time for inferencing purposes. To conclude, we built a text classifier using the text classifier class of arcgis.learn.text submodule. The dataset we have picked up consists of house addresses written in multiple languages like English, Japanese, French, Spanish, etc. To build the model, we used the XLM Roberta model to create the classifier to predict the country of an incomplete house address. That's all about the trainable models offered by the arcgis.learn.text submodule. Next we have is the inference only models. The arcgis.learn.text submodule provides the following six inference only text models. Zero shot classifier, text summarizer, text translator, question answering, text generator, and fill mask. These models differs from the rest of the models offered by the arcgis.learn module in the sense that these models do not need to be trained on a given data set before these models can be used for inferencing. Therefore, these models do not have methods like LR find and fit, which are required for fine tuning or training an ArcGIS model. Let's talk about the zero shot classifier. The zero shot classifier classifies an input sequence from a list of candidate labels. It is based on zero shot learning. The zero shot learning is a specific area of machine learning which aims to classify data based on very few or even no training examples. In this demo, we will learn about the working of zero shot classifier and how this zero shot classifier model can be used to get an idea about the general public sentiment regarding the COVID-19 vaccine. The zero shot classifier is based on zero shot learning. It's a specific area of machine learning where we want the model to classify the data based on very few or even no training examples. The zero shot classifier classifies an input sequence from a list of candidate labels. To use the zero shot classifier model, we first need to import it and then create the model object by calling the zero shot classifier class. The model assumes by default that only one of the candidate label is true and returns a list of scores for each label which add up to one. This is the particular scenario for single label classification task. As an example, we want to classify this input sequence, who are you voting for in 2020, into the following candidate labels, politics, public health, economics. To do so, we will call the classifier predict method and pass in the sequence and candidate labels. And as we can see, the model has correctly classified the input sequence into politics label. For multi-level classification, we simply need to pass multi-class equal to true in the predict method of the model. In this example, we would like to classify the two input sequences into the following candidate labels. Toxic, severe toxic, threat, insult, and identity hate. To do a multi-level classification, we will pass the multi-class parameter to true in the classifier's predict method. Looking at the result for the first sequence, take this map down you do not own this map, project or data. The classifier has given very high scores for the labels threat, insult, toxic and severe toxic, but not so high score for the candidate label identity hate. The zero shot classifier model has been fine tuned on XNLI corpus, which include 15 different languages like Arabic, Chinese, English, French, German, Hindi, Russian, Spanish, etc. So this model can be used to classify multilingual text as well. Below is an example which shows how this model can be used to classify an input sequence written in Spanish language. In this example, we have translated the input sequence and candidate labels into Spanish language and we are using the same classifier to predict the candidate labels for the input sequence. So as you can see, the classifier is correctly predicting the label for the input sequence written in Spanish language. The model can also be used with any combination of languages. For example, we can use the same model to classify a Russian sentence in English candidate labels. So this is an input sequence written in Russian language and we are using the candidate labels written in English language. So here is an example where we can see that it can work with any combination of languages. Next, we will see how the zero shot classifier can be used to get an idea about the different public opinion regarding the COVID-19 vaccine. 
So in this demo, we will apply the zero threat classifier class on the tweets that are related to words like COVID and vaccine in 100 km radius of South Carolina region. We will be predicting the sentiments of tweets to be either positive or negative. As no telling data set is available related to the general public sentiments towards the COVID vaccine as of now, so the zero shot classifier model of arcgis.learn.txt submodule will be a perfect choice for this scenario as the model is capable of predicting the labels for the input data even when no training example is provided to the model. To achieve our goal, we will first import necessary modules required and connect to the ArcGIS online account to get the desired content by passing the appropriate item ID. So this ArcGIS item contains a CSV file containing the tweets that are made regarding the COVID-19 vaccine. So we will download that CSV file and let's look at the contents or some of the tweets that are present in that CSV file. Next, we will add some code to process the tweets by removing the URLs and HTML tags present in them. So we will write a helper function that will take a tweet as an input and removes the HTML and the URLs from it. We will then apply this function to the tweets that are available in the Twitter data frame. We want to predict the sentiment of the tweets as either positive or negative. To achieve this, we will call the predict method of the zero shot classifier model and pass the corresponding candidate labels to the predict method. We will then create a data frame containing the tweets and the score that the classifier has given for a given tweet for the candidate label positive and negative. Let's look at some of the tweets that our classifier thinks are in positive sentiment. So as you can see from here that all of the tweets that are mentioned are highly positive in nature. And here is an example of the tweets made in negative sentiments. Moving forward, we have the text summarizer model. Text summarization refers to a technique of shortening long pieces of text. The idea is to create a coherent and concise output by keeping only the main points of the input sentence. So the text summarizer model can be used to generate summaries for a given text. In this demo, we will see how we can use the text summarizer model to generate summaries for ArcGIS items. Let's see how the text summarizer model can be used to generate summaries for ArcGIS item. This model has been fine-tuned on summarization task and is part of the inference-only classes offered by the ArcGIS.learn.txt submodule. So we have picked up a story map from WCS Canada that talks about a freshwater ecosystem in the north of Ontario region and what this organization has been doing to conserve this freshwater ecosystem. So we will be using this story map as an example to demonstrate how we can summarize the content of a story map and add the summary to its item description. To achieve our goal, we will first connect to the ArcGIS online account Pass in the appropriate item ID to get the story map content. So as you can see, the story map description is currently empty. We will write some helper functions to get the text content of the story map. The find text function, it's a recursive function that accepts a JSON and it looks for a particular key to get the text content of the story map. Some processing also needs to be done on the extracted text because it contains HTML tags. So we need to remove them before generating the summary. So let's look at the text content of the story map. So this is the text content that we have extracted from the story map item. We will be using the text summarizer class to summarize the text. To do that, we instantiate the class object of the text summarizer model and call the summarize method of this class to generate the summary for the text extracted from the story map. So as you can see, we have summarized the content of the story map. Next, we will update the story map item description over here. So as we can see that the story map item description now contains the summary of the story map and which can be verified by going to the ArcGIS item. So as we can see here, the description has been populated with the summary of the story map uh, item. 
So in this notebook, we have demonstrated how we have used the set text summarizer class of rgs.learn.text sum module to perform the summarization task and uh, update the items uh, description. Next we have is the text translator model. The text translator model is a deep learning model which is fine tuned on a machine translation task. A machine translation is a subfield of computational linguistic that deals with the problem of translating an input text from one language to another. In this demo, we will be showing how we can use the text translator model to translate a story map from one language to another. Story map is basically a web map that is created for a given context with supporting information so that it become a standalone resource. It can contain maps, legends, text, photos and videos. And it can be built using SRE story map template. One can simply create a web map, supply the text and image for the story and configure the template file to create the story map. Sometimes there is a need to convert the text of a story map from one language to another so that it can be understood by non-native language speaker as well. With the recent advancement in natural language processing and deep learning, it is now possible for a machine translation system to reach human-like performance in translating a text. For this demo, we will be picking up a story map written in English language that talks about the near-term improvement in the South Pleasant Valley Road. Our goal will be to translate the content of this story map into Spanish language. To do so, we will first import the necessary modules and then connect to the ArcGIS online account, get the desired item ID and then clone this item into our ArcGIS account. We will then apply the text translator model of the ArcGIS.learn.text module to this cloned item to convert the content of the story map to Spanish language. Now we have cloned the item and then we will instantiate the text translator model. We wish to translate text from English language to Spanish. So we invoke the object by passing the corresponding ISO language codes in the model constructor. We will also need to write a helper function to help translate the content of story map into the desired language. The replace function, it's a recursive function that accepts the story map item dictionary and applies the translate function to the keys that contain the text of the story map. The translate function will translate the English text into Spanish language. The story map text can sometimes contain HTML tags. We will be using beautiful soup library to get the non-html part of the input text and then use the text translator translate method to translate the English content into Spanish language. We will then call the story map items get data method to retrieve the data associated with that item. And not only we will translate the text content of the story map, but we will be also translating the alternate description, title, summary, etc into Spanish language. After doing this, we will update the cloned story map and then it's ready to be published. So we have published the translated story map item. Let's look at the content of the translated story map. As we can see, the description has been translated into Spanish language. And if we see the story map, how it looks like. Yeah, so as you can see, the text content of the story map has been translated. So in this demo, we have demonstrated how the inference only text translator class of arcgis.learn.text submodule can be used to perform machine translation task. We showed how easy it is to translate a story map which is written in an English language into a Spanish language. Similar workflow can be followed to automate the task of translating a story map other inference-only text models offered by arcgis.learn.text submodule are question answering, text generator, and fill mask. The question answering model is based on extractive question answering mechanism. The idea is when the model is presented with a question and a passage, the model returns the string sequence from the passage which answers the question. The text generator model generates sequence of text for a given incomplete text or paragraph. The text generator model can be used for text autocorrection or assisting writers in autocompleting the sentences. The fill mask model can be used to provide suggestions for a missing token or word in a sentence. In this demo, we will talk about the question answering 
text generator and the fill mask model. Let's see how the question answering text generator and fill mask model works. These models are part of the inference only models provided by the arcgis.learn.txt submodule. These models can be imported using the following command. Let's talk about the question answering model. The question answering model can be used to extract answers from input questions from a given context. These models have been fine tuned on question answering tasks like Squad. Squad belongs to a subdivision of question answering system known as extractive question answering system. When an extractive question answering system is presented with a question and a passage, it is tasked to return the string sequence from the passage which answers the question. To get a list of supported transformer backbones, we will call the supported backbone parameter of the model class. To instantiate a model object, we will call the question answering class constructor. Let's see this model in action. In this example, we will provide a list of questions and a context in which we will like to find the answers for these questions. To do so, we will call the getAnswer method of the model and pass on the question list and the context. Here are the results that the model has given to us. If we look at the second example, how is point cloud dataset collected? The model is able to correctly extract the answer to this question that point cloud dataset is collected using LiDAR sensors. And also in the third question, like what is LiDAR? The model has extracted LiDAR is light detection and ranging. So in this example, we have demonstrated how we can use the question answering class of the arcgis.learn.txt module to get or extract answers from a given passage. Moving on to the text generator model. The text generator model can be used to generate sequence of text for a given incomplete text sequence or paragraph. These models are trained with an autoregressive language modeling objective and can therefore be useful in predicting the next token in a sequence. To get a list of supported transformer backbones, we call the supported backbone parameter of the text generator model class. We then instantiate a model object by calling the text generator class constructor. Let's see this model in action. In this example, we have provided an incomplete sentence and asked the model to complete it. To do so, we will call the generate text method of the text generator class and pass the appropriate sequence. Here are the results that are provided by the text generator model. We can also play with the max length parameter to generate shorter or longer sequences. Moving forward to the fill mask model. Fill mask model can be used to provide suggestions for a missing token or a word in a sentence. These models have been trained with a masked language modeling objective, which includes the bi-directional models in the library. To get a list of supported transformer backbones, we will call the supported backbones attribute of the model class. We will then instantiate a model object by calling the fill mask class constructor. Let's see this model in action. In this example, we have picked up a sentence. This deep learning model is used to extract building footprints from high resolution satellite imagery. And we have deliberately masked the imagery word. And then we are asking the model to generate or give recommendations for the missing word or token. Here are the results. As you can see, the model is giving recommendations for the word imagery as images, data, photos. So to summarize, in this demo, we have seen how the question answering text generator and fill mask model of arcgis.learn.txt submodule can be used to perform different tasks. So that's all regarding the unstructured text models offered by the arcgis.learn.txt submodule. To summarize, often the spatial data is hidden away in an unstructured format. Natural language processing is a field of computer science that deals with the interaction between computer and human languages. Natural language processing can be used to extract GIS or spatial information from unstructured text. In this session, we have learned how GIS and natural language processing has come together through the arcgis.learn.txt submodule in ArcGIS API for Python. We have demonstrated the use of Entity Recognizer model to extract entities from unstructured text. 
sequence to sequence model to regularize and correct street addresses text classifier model to identify country names from incomplete house addresses and the inference only text models to perform machine translation summarization and question answering tasks here are the resources to learn more about the arcgis.learn module in arcgis api for python please provide your feedback for this session by clicking on the survey link directly below the video thank you